We are the shipping fans. We'll always find a way to ship the ships we ship until another day. That's why the people of this world often have no idea what on earth we're talking about. Hi shippers, this is Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's time to dive into Steven Universe. A phrase to which I'm sure some of you are saying, finally. Steven Universe is the tale of the titular Steven and his guardians, the Crystal Gems, defenders of Earth. The show revolves around their adventures, ranging from the mundane to the cataclysmic, and employs a unique blend of climaxes that are a mix of action as well as reasoning and compassion. Not every problem is solved with fists, and many traditional cartoon tropes are subverted, particularly around gender roles. The show pre is a message of tolerance, acceptance, and doing one's best to make the world a better place. Through one of the most transformative emotions of all, love, be it platonic, romantic, familial, or any other way that people can find to enrich each other's lives. As with most popular fandoms, Steven Universe has its fair share of ships slash pairings, particularly encouraged by the underlying sapphic tones of the show due to the predominance of characters represented by female avatars. Though, the show's creators have made clear that the gems are genderless and manifest in a form identified to humans as female. However, since they respond to female pronouns and appear female in form, they are often used as representations for real-world female empowerment, and to highlight gender issues, which causes contention among some fans who feel this violates the genderless spirit and cuts off some unique avenues of exploration. But we'll touch more on that later. However, regardless of how one feels about that aspect of the show, vis-a-vis -vis whether this pairing would be considered a lesbian pairing or not, there is no denying the intense popularity of Lapidot, the pairing of Lapis Lazuli and Peridot. Heads up, this may be a bit more spoilery than usual, as Steven Universe is a highly serialized cartoon, which means that events and character development rely heavily on what has happened before, and episodes and arcs are very closely tied together. So as always, let's meet the players. Lapis Lazuli Lazuli was a gem from the gem homeworld, imprisoned within a mirror, perhaps a reflection of the real-world use of lapis lazuli, in ornate constructions such as pendants and bowls and art, due to its intense beauty and color payoff. She spent thousands of years being trapped, forced to give information, before being discarded until she was given to Steven by Pearl, so that he can experience a school-like learning experience, having never been to a school before. Steven and Lapis bond, and she begins to speak with him, culminating with him freeing her from the mirror, and ultimately healing her cracked gem. Lapis is initially bitter and cold, and particularly distrustful of the crystal gems, except for Steven, and is miserable about being trapped on Earth. This combination of a desire to protect Steven Steven and disconnect from her fellow gems as well as humans aids in her fusion with Jasper, who she fuses with to save the world, and the two remain trapped at the bottom of the ocean for some time. Following their eventual separation, Lapis seeks a place to belong and recover from her time fused with Jasper as Malachite, a time she has mixed feelings about as she is horrified that part of her enjoyed the cruelty of their abusive relationship. She is striving to reconnect with the kind part of herself and trust again. She has decided to stay on Earth and is, and is defining herself as an individual, and has seemingly found a safe space with her at first unlikely roommate, Peridot. Peridot herself is a homeworld gem, initially extremely loyal to homeworld and to Jasper. A technician with a flair for the dramatic, she appears calculating and disconnected. However, following Jasper's initial defeat and numerous encounters with the Crystal Gems, she befriends Steven, who makes a concentrated effort to get to know her, and through her interactions with the Crystal Gems, she begins to learn social niceties and form friendships, ultimately culminating in her becoming a Crystal Gem herself. Peridot became a fan favorite upon her appearance, with many taking to her surprisingly likable abrasive personality. Blunt with a dark sense of humor, Peridot adds a unique dynamic to the gems, and her quirky interactions with all of them cemented her as a character worth getting to know. That and many just found her character design to be adorable. Due to her newfound feelings towards the gems and Earth, Peridot does have some regrets for her past actions, which has resulted in her reaching out and trying to make amends, particularly to Lapis Lazuli. So before the two found themselves living together in a barn they had filled with their own modern and abstract creations and marathoning their favorite TV show, these two had not had much interaction, aside from the initial. So what did people see in these two? Well, Steven Universe is unique insofar as the characters are constantly growing and changing, meaning their relationships are always in flux, and certain characters may not be seen for a while while others develop around them, meaning that reasons for this ship grew over time as similarities began to build higher and higher. 
These two gems both hail from Homeworld and have a knowledge of gems, gem culture, and gem expectations that are not fully comprehensible to Steven or the audience as of yet, so it can be extrapolated that there may be many facets of that culture that they do miss. As while both are adapting to Earth, they do also display some homesickness, and having someone to reminisce with could be desirable. Both are rendered lost by the crystal gems, thrust aside from their definitions of self, and both need to find a new purpose, which they find together in their shared art projects. Both are looking for forgiveness for past actions, and both are seeking to become better people, an arc that for Lapis has apparently canonically included her forgiveness of Peridot. And Peridot partially seeks to take care of Lapis not only out of affection, but also concern, and a slight smidgen of guilt. Both can identify at least marginally with each other's pain, as aside from both finding themselves trapped on Earth and having their expectations shattered, both have been involved in some form of abusive relationship with Jasper. Peridot was trapped in a workplace-style relationship full of belittling and aggression, while Lapis was fused to Jasper in a relationship that forced their consciousnesses together in a constant battle for dominance. Both have been left altered by these experiences, though Lapis more so as her time with Jasper was more intense and has left her questioning some things about herself. Based upon certain canonical occurrences, it appears that Lapis suffers from some level of PTSD and trauma that Peridot is trying to help her work through. Both are seeking to find their own sense of self-worth not through each other, but are happy for the companionship. Peridot has blossomed into a more secure gem, confident in her likes and dislikes as well as accepting her limitations as well as embracing newfound abilities, while Lapis is healing slowly and coming to accept Earth and finding her serenity and sense of happiness. And of course, on the purely superficial side, people thought they looked cute together. With the calming complimentary blue and green tones, the art featuring these two is stunning. Fix about these two come in a variety of packages, which of course include your standard college and university AUs, club AUs, use Prohibition era AU, which yes please, as well as alternate explorations of evolving gem conflicts and the typical explorations of these two's relationships. As for why people wouldn't ship it, while at first these characters had barely had any interaction, and what little they had had was antagonistic, leaving many fans baffled as to where this pairing was coming from and why it had suddenly ballooned to such a large size. While many of Steven Universe's themes revolve around forgiveness and second chances, many have a hard time placing themselves in the position where they could forgive Peridot no matter how much she had changed, while others are not big shippers when it comes to Steven Universe, at least not in the romantic sense, preferring to explore the many layers of different types of relationships. Since many find Steven Universe to be uncommon in the way it subtly takes the time to illustrate and explore different types of relationships, which while some may be overtly romantic, many are not, and deal with many nuanced and not often highlighted layers to these aforementioned relationships. In short, some find it too common given everything else going on, while others would argue this very nuance is what makes this pairing so exciting to explore. Due to the rich emotional depth encouraged by the show itself, a depth that is inspiring to many shippers. And of course, there is also always the factor of some people preferring other ships. In this case, Lapidot has a direct pairing rival in Amidot, the pairing of Amethyst and Peridot, emerging from their burgeoning friendship, and Peridot's clear desire for Amethyst's approval, though it could be argued that Peridot is seeking approval in general. However, the intensity of the rivalry between these two ships is a last near the level of an all-out shipping war, and there have been emotional casualties. It is important to remember that that ship shaming and online harassment have very real consequences, and it is very easy for a mob mentality to develop online. The victim in this case was Steven Universe storyboard artist Lauren Zook, who found herself facing the ire of Amidot fans after the episode Beta aired, when she shared some sketches that many took to be her condoning the Lapidot relationship. This resulted in so many people messaging her and harassing her on Twitter that she ended up deleting it after posting a series of now-deleted tweets. This brings up several interesting points, one of the idea of fan ownership or entitlement when it pertains to their specific ships. Are fans entitled to representation for their specific OTPs, regardless of the endgame in place by the show's creators? Can one assume they know the direction a show is going, and do creators have a responsibility to acknowledge the fandom? And if they do, is that responsibility forfeited when people take things too far? Why is it so necessary for some people to see their headcanons made into literal canon, especially on a show that has been so open to much usually shunned representation and 
tries so hard to promote positivity. Another criticism leveled against her were that these pictures were in fact signs of queer baiting, as the relationship is not canon. And some felt these images hinted that the staff on the show were well aware of viewers' feelings towards either ship and that these posts were taunting them with a relationship that may never happen. Which has added more layers to this incident, as some simply felt this was an unfair complaint to level against a show that due to the fact that it employs the female form regardless of the genderless nature of the characters has, because of the aforementioned fact, been largely taken as a celebration of lesbian love. Another critique levied against those levying this complaint is that Lauren Zook is queer herself, and to accuse an already marginalized person of further perpetuating what many view to be a harmful practice is not only mean-spirited, but impossible, stating that a queer person cannot queer bait. However, others have said that baiting of the queer variety or not is part of media, stating that when showrunners, creators, or staff notice an affinity for any pairing, it has been known for them to push them to the forefront with the full knowledge that it is not part of the show's endgame to boost views, and that anybody is capable of doing this, queer or not. While others say it is unlikely for her to be doing so since queer baiting is rendered more problematic due to the fact that the standards of heteronormativity make it far are less likely that the creators will ever put the baited couple together, and being aware of how hurtful that would be, it is unlikely that was her intention. While still more feel that queer baiting is on its way to becoming a buzzword and overused by some who may not even fully comprehend its meaning, and that some situations are being mislabeled, and some would name this very situation as one of them. And of course, there are those who just find this whole situation to be a combination of baffling and amusing. All in all, the situation has highlighted an unpleasant small faction of an otherwise very awesome fandom and pushed it to the forefront. It is always important to note that the actions of some do not mean that every Amidot or Lapidot shipper is like this. As a matter of fact, many Steven Universe fans rushed to stand up for Zook, but the damage had already been done. This incident has fueled concerns that the fandom may be becoming toxic. It is unfortunate that this was some people's first introduction to not only Amidot and Lapidot, but shipping in general. It is always important to respect space and boundaries, even if there is the feeling that a ship is being ignored. Which some can take personally, equating their own ship with their own value. However, just because someone is sharing part of themselves and their own personal interests on Tumblr or on social media does not make them fair game for harassment. Everybody should be able to express their own headcanons, even creators. Everyone has their own ideas, and that includes people who are actually working on the final product. As was highlighted in one of her tweets, just because you work on a project does not mean you have any say in its final development. The opinions of those working on a project, just like every everyone else deserve to be respected. And just because someone doesn't ship the same thing as you or thinks differently than you does not mean that they are personally attacking you or trying to undermine your own values. Drama aside, Lapidot is an interesting ship and Steven Universe is a singular show worth checking out. Whatever the future holds for these two, be it canon or simply within the fandom itself, hopefully it is as intriguing as the characters themselves. Are you guys Lapidot shippers? Do you have any Steven Universe pairings? Share all of your thoughts on everything down below. This is Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out Twitter to stay up to date, and as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.